So where are we with the counter-offensive? It's a hard question to answer because Ukraine is operating tight operational security, with most of the information coming from unofficial sources across social media channels. But these are some of the developments of the past few days. On the front line, the going is still slow. The Ukrainians haven't yet made the breakthrough they need to launch stage two of this operation, which is likely to see several armoured brigades unleashed against the Russian lines. What we're continuing to see are small-scale localised battles with both the Ukrainians and the Russians taking and losing ground. To the north and south of Bakhmut, Ukrainian troops managed to advance further, expanding the recaptured areas marked in blue. There's also fighting on the Dnipro Delta, on the lower reaches of the Dnipro River. The UK MOD says both sides are using fast motorboats, but the Russians are struggling to reinforce their troop numbers here without impacting their already overstretched forces fighting in Zaporizhia. Elsewhere, the Russians have counterattacked with varying levels of success. In northeastern Ukraine, around Kremina, they tried to push out to the west of the city. Further south, around Avdivka, the Russians made some marginal gains, the areas marked in yellow. After his failed mutiny, Yevgeny Prigozhin has reportedly resurfaced, addressing Wagner Group fighters in Belarus. In this video, he says they're withdrawing from the special military operation for now because of the shame it's bringing on Russia. And he tells his army of mercenaries and conscripts they're going to Africa instead. After Brigoshin's brief rebellion, the sacking of Major General Ivan Popov, who commanded Russia's 58th Combined Arms Army, is another indication of fault lines in the Russian military. In a recorded message, the 48-year-old explained how shortages of kit and equipment were crippling his army's ability to fight. A lack of counter-battery radars had left masses of his soldiers dead, he said, exposed to withering Ukrainian artillery. But within hours, the head of Russia's military, General Valery Gerasimov, had him dismissed. The attack on the Kerch Bridge, the second in 10 months, is already impacting Russian logistics in southern Ukraine. Moscow retaliated by launching a wave of missile and drone strikes against the Black Sea ports of Odessa and Mykolaiv, the heaviest since the start of the war. The Kremlin also announced it would leave the grain deal that guaranteed safety to shipping and now treat any vessel trying to access Ukrainian ports as a legitimate military target. That's now putting it on a possible collision course with Turkey, which, as a NATO nation, could be obliged to guarantee the safety of shipping lanes in the Black Sea. More than 500 days into the war, the counteroffensive is continuing on three sectors. Ukraine has recaptured an estimated 250 square kilometres of territory since it began on the 4th of June. That's the same as Russian forces captured in the past six months. Importantly, reports say Ukraine has started using the controversial cluster munitions sent by the US. For Kyiv, these are seen as a possible way of breaching the deep Russian defensive lines as they continue to look for that decisive breakthrough. Simon Newton, Forces News. Thanks for watching. For more from Forces News, like and subscribe to our channel.